Hello and welcome to the Sweaty Department and the Game Design. It is morning and our Blackberries bring us the news like the good boys they are. This is episode number 12 a Blizzard of News, BlizzCon 2019. I am the Longing Gamer as the Sweaty. And I am Lucho the Farmer. Thanks for joining us in this episode. This week we get lost in a Blizzard of announcements directly from BlizzCon 2019. Woo! But before that, let's take a look at the news, maybe? And our guest, Nick. Where do you come from? Hello, what do Nick. you do? Tell us everything about it. Or something about you. Something about me. Okay. I'm a fan of the FPS junior. Um, I am a mathematician. Right. And I like gaming, as you guys. Woo! There you go. He likes gaming. He he plays most of all Overwatch 2. So we have Overwatch very special. Two? No, he plays Overwatch. 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 Spoilers, eh? Right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if he's playing Overwatch 2, he has inside the info. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we have a very special podcast today. We have, of course, our guest here. But we have a podcast of only news because this weekend was BlizzCon 2019. So we're going to discuss, of course, BlizzCon. How was the, the ceremony? We're going to discuss Diablo 4 stuff. We're going to score, discuss Overwatch 2 stuff. And we're going to discuss World of Warcraft Shadowlands a little bit. Of course, inside the, the convention, there was like a new expansion for Hearthstone, but nobody cares. And it was... Uh, uh, but we don't play Hearthstone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we have new Heroes of the Storm stuff. Nobody cares either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like MOAS, so yes. that's why. <laughs> I don't like MOAS. Uh, so yeah, how was the convention for you, Lucho? How was it? You like it? Uh, it, was, it was definitely better than last year's. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> it, it was like a success. Uh, did you see it, the opening ceremony, right, Nick? No, I didn't saw that. You didn't saw the opening ceremony? What? Nope. Did you saw like the relations, trailers, and all that sort of stuff, all those news? I saw some trailers. There you go. Well, he, he at least at least saw the trailers and he's yeah. He he find out about everything. So so yeah, it was it was a nice. It was a, even with the weird start of the BlizzCon president just like saying, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry." That uh, <laughs> just like That was not that weird. That was expected. Yeah, just like yeah. that. Uh, they had remember? to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you remember that episode of Salt Park of the oil company? Either of you no. have seen that? No. There's like this episode of South Park of the of an oil company and they like do this ginormous spill. And then it is a video of them just sitting with a puppy and saying, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In a carpet. I know you're <laughs> you remember, right? Just yeah. like that. It feels just like that. <laughs> We're sorry. Anyways, passing that, we got like they opened with the with the Diablo 4 reveal, which was fantastic yeah. trailer. It was amazing. The big reveal for this year. Yeah, they started with the bank and then they finished with the with the close with the Overwatch 2 reveal. So yeah. I, I think overall it was like a much better blizzard than last year. Last year was a disaster. Even with the unfortunately Hong Kong controversies uh that soon passed by and there was like protests that morning, you told me, Lucho? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah, there was some protests this morning, apparently. And, of course, they did one that we saw. We, they did one Q&A with people. And the Hong Kong thing came in because, of course. But the host just, like, it, they handled it okay. Right? Yeah, it, it, it was well handled. Like, they had a... Yeah, they, they only had a Q&A with people on the audience for... Wow, for World Warcraft. Yeah. And yeah, there a little kid was screaming at some point Free Hong Kong or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Free Hong correctly. Kong. And one of the one of the uh the dude who asked to so sell Free Hong Kong Revolution over time and like they were having it home, like they, they like but but it was expected, I think. It was expected. That it yeah, happen. I, I, I was just the the host handled it gracefully, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was. Do you have any thoughts on, on that, Nick? No, I didn't saw that. You didn't saw that. Do, do you know about the controversies and, and all this yeah. stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I know about that. Uh, but as Lucho said on a previous podcast, 
they're a private company. They can almost do whatever the, they want to do in their in their streams and in their official channels. All right. So you agree with Lucho, I guess. <laughs> yeah. In a certain sense. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Past that, let's get into the meaty greedy. Today, there's no disclaimer because we are actually covering the news <laughs> in a proper way. So we're, we we're finally doing, are. Yeah, we're doing our best try the actual like gaming journalist thingy thingy. But more, more <laughs> than that, we want to like to you know, feel that bad, but because we spend money on the virtual ticket. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a real, <laughs> so <the> real yeah. <laughs> let's let's get right into it. Yep. Yeah. You think guys? Let's get, let's get okay. right to it. Do you want to add something else about the, the convention? I love the cosplay, by the way. Oh, the, the cosplay is amazing. It, it was, yeah, it I was saw some amazing. footage on Twitter, and that was amazing. Yeah, did you saw it? Yeah, I, I was uh, following on Twitter some people, yeah. like the, mm -hmm. voice of, the, the, the woman that does the voice of Sombra, yep. that she was uh, cosplaying as Sombra, and... Uh, she took a lot of photos with also the one that does McCree yeah. and um, someone else. And yeah. the cosplays were amazing, amazing. Amazing, yeah. We, we had like the Sylvanas that won the one of the one of the no, shows. Runs. Yeah, oh, it was it was a spectacular cosplay. So as usual, the panels were very informative. We love the art of Diablo, by the way. Yeah, it, it was the new, the new art style of of Diablo for. Yeah. Overall, it was like a very cool uh, BlizzCon 2019. And of course, in, in, in the competitive side, USA won the World Cup of Overwatch. Boo. Uh, boo. boo. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, yeah, you were a Korea fanboy, Ray. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and... I, I don't know. Korea didn't have Jay Jonak. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what happened with the with Korea's roster. It wasn't the roster that I expected. Really? It would, it would yeah. You were expecting like more stars on the front? Jijonek and maybe, I don't yeah. know. Who else could they put? I expected more more stars from Korea's team. Uh, but, for example, US roster was like San Francisco Shock and some of the best on LA Valiant. Yeah. Which were San Francisco Shock were the, the actual champions of this Overwatch season. Yeah. So yeah, so they they bring the star power, but maybe yeah, maybe the rest. Yeah. Of, I was like, I was rooting for France because I I thought that they would deserve the third place. They were they were playing very well. Uh, but yeah, and that's the that's that's the side of the thing. So let's get into the stuff that we have to discuss because. Because we love some of these games a lot, my friends. So let's start yeah. with Diablo 4. <laughs> with the meatiest of all. Oh my god, this game, this reveal. <laughs> I, I, I got the feeling, like, I got, I got sincerely the feeling that they were, like, holding on for a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows in, in which the element state the, the game was a year ago. It's hard to tell by this point, but... Uh, they also seem to be really far away from anything close to to release state. So, yep. yep. And I don't know what could have they shown last year, aside from just like a trailer. You know what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. I got this year they have a lot of like actual information about the game and a full on working demo and. Three working classes, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and like, the, the, well, uh, where would we do start? Well, let's let's start by saying that the reveal was amazing, that the trail was fantastic. Oh, that trailer is so good! Oh my god, it was it was it was spectacular. What I'll say, <laughs> even for so Blazer good. standards, like the, yeah. the reveal of Lily, the way that the the the, the procedures are going. Like the cape of like flesh and midi, like instant, instantly, instantly gives the the tone to the game. Like this is yeah. not your like super like colorful Diablo three. This is back to bloody 
violent and hyper realistic Diablo three, Diablo two and one. In, yeah, in it's like, definitely a, a darker feel than in contrast to Diablo three. That's, absolutely, that's for sure. Absolutely, more gritty and dark. And apparently, in the timeline, is three years after Diablo three Reaper of Souls. Yep. Yep. It happens in there. So what do you, what do you think about that, Nick? I don't know. I didn't follow the Diablo discon. You didn't see all the news, all the stuff, the reveal trailer. You, you watched the reveal trailer, right? Yeah. Yeah, you watched the reveal trailer. Do you like it? Yeah, I liked it. It was nice. Uh, Blizzard's very, very good doing cinematics right now. I think that they're each time improving and moving you in some way. Yeah. Yeah, so you like you would like to experience Diablo 4 as a more greedy. You play the other Diablos, right? Yeah. The other ones. They show it me and games like Diablo is so I don't have the time to do all the grind. I don't have the time to do grindy games. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> do you like the game is my question. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the game. Like... The, the, the game looks wonderful. You're asking me if I will play it in I don't know well, two you... years when it's released. Imagine uh, that you can, do you have to, the time to play. It? <laughs> would you like to play it? <laughs> yeah, probably. Probably. All right, there I you go. There also, you I mean, you could play the story and enjoy that side of the game. Yeah, you don't have to grind yeah. till, till that. Right. No grind Yeah, so true. There you go. There's there is time for you to enjoy games. <laughs> 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 so the big bad of Diablo 4 was Lilith. What is the, yeah. the context of this uh, entire thing in the lore? And it's very important for oh, Lilith is it's a principal character because she's the Mother of humanity. The mother of humanity, right? And through yeah. all the all the, all the panels. Although it's the first mother, like it's not the only one. Yeah, she's. Yeah, that was the, the the clarification I was gonna do. Yeah. She's the first mother, not the only. Because as the story goes, for those of you who know are not like familiar. Yeah, or deep in the Diablo franchise lore overall. Um, Sanctuary, which is the world of Diablo, was created by Lilith and. What's the name of the angel? I almost forget his name. Yeah, I don't remember his name. A horny angel. <laughs> Let's call horny. him the horniest of angels. <laughs> Who just like, they say like, ah, oh, we, we, we want to stop the conflict between heaven and air and we just want to bang. In Arius. In Arius, there you go, thank you. <laughs> And we would just better when a bank when a place uh, called me to bank. So he, I don't know, seduced, fell in love, whatever happened. Lilith and he and they two stole the war stone, which is the MacGuffin of Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> More or less, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and they make sanctuary, and then the kids and other rebels and demons. Uh, that they want to be in the conflict, they just want to peace and love. A bunch of like angels and hippie demons, I guess. <laughs> they, I don't know if they want peace and love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They went and bank all over sanctuary, and then they created humanity and the Nephilims and so forth and so forth. That's that's the importance of Lily. They, she was like with the narratives, they were the orchestrator of this like unbalancing. Of stuffs in in Diablo. That's why she's so relevant to the lore. <clears throat> and we know that they trap her at some point in the story in the scene war. They trap her yep. in a prison and in arrows. And uh, the the father of Lilith, which is the Mephisto. Lord, the Mephisto, the Lord of of rage. No, the Lord of hatred. The Lord of hatred. Uh, trip in areas and he has been torturing him for banging his daughter for like 3,000 years or so. Yeah. <laughs> so Lilith's back 
And more so at the end of Reaper of Souls, all the demons and stuff that were trapped in the MacGuffin and the, the small MacGuffin, which was the black stone, which was a piece of Soulstone. a war stone and MacGuffins. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is it is important because the whole context is of, on this eternal war between angels and demons and and humanity when it came to a was supposed to be or could be one of the main weapons to sway the world to one side or, or another. Yeah. But the point is that you can never kill demons, really. You can only trap them, trap their souls. And that's what the games have been about so far. So I'm not sure if for you can either. Who like... have played... Sorry? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. No, for those who have played Diablo 1, like you fight Diablo at the end, but you cannot kill him. So you can only trap his soul in a soul stone. Yeah. But it is uh, in the other one, like you cannot contain it. So the hero who ended up killing the other, like trap he, the other soul on his own body. And and that's a super sad story that I really like. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, then the other two was again, fighting these demons and trying to contain their souls in soul stones. Yes. And the point is at the end of of uh, Reapers of Souls, of the Outlet Tree Reapers of Souls, the Black Soul Stone, which is the purest form of trapping MacGuffin for yes. soul demons, for soul, for demon souls, yeah. uh, get broken. And, and apparently all the souls just are wandering around trying to find what to do with themselves. And, and the point is that all the demon souls will always work to get back to a conflict and try to destroy the high heavens and humanity. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I was going to ask you if you know if you can actually kill angels. Apparently, yes. But that, that doesn't make sense. If you cannot kill demons, you should not be able to kill angels. They're basically they can become mortal. The same thing, right? If they become mortal, it's different, right? That's, that's, that's different, right? Yeah, but like, I feel like some of the angels have died. The the, the angry dude, I think, died. We killed him or died at some point in, in the other three, right? Yeah, the one who who was kind of the boss of the, the boss, angels. Yeah, the boss of the angels, yeah. Uh, I forgot his name. Hmm. The high council. Ah, the high council guy. Yeah, the guy who was like very angry and like he, he, I don't know, nag poor uh, the the poor black angel, man. The poor black angel. I know <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> Tira, there you go, Tira. <laughs> yeah. He was just he was like, no, no, Tira, you don't, you should not like do that and stuff. And you should so, not interfere with humanity. Yeah, you know? yeah, bad yeah. Tyrell, bad Tyrell, like, eh, eh. So, so yeah. So I think I think, the angels, I, th I think the angels should not die because they basically come from the same, from the same stuff, like from the same place, right? I'm not so sure. Imperius is the name of the. <laughs> of the of, of like, the of the bad dude, right? He dies like at some dude. point in Diablo three. I, I got the feeling. I'm pretty sure he dies. Yeah, he dies at some point of Diablo three. And... So maybe you can kill angels, but not demons. Mm. That's that does that doesn't make sense. That basically comes from like the same soup. That could still be possible for whatever reason. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Hmm. But now the question is like the world stone is broken, right? Yeah. And the black soul stone, which was the only thing left, is broken. So how? Like my biggest question after all the reveals that we're gonna discuss here is like how are they gonna trap demons now? What is your Lower theory? Ways? Who knows? What is your theory, Nick? I don't know. Who could know? I think that the, that will be the great reveal in the game. How are they going to trip demons now? Yeah. I think that story-wise, the first part of the game will be trying to find something where you can put souls of demons. All right. Um, yes. <laughs> Your theory is what? Yeah. A jar? 
Wait, did my fool well? Yeah, did my fool <laughs> <laughs> We gotta, we gotta trap it in the jar. Yeah, because there's no point of us, yeah. like, as Nephilim heroes going through the war and, like, just, like, killing demons, <clears> but <throat> they're gonna bring back, like, bad weeds. Right? Yeah. That's that's my only thing. All right. So Lilith is very cool as a baddie. The design of her is absolutely amazing. The horns. I love the horns that she has. Yeah, She's also, cool. as they mentioned, like, she is... Allegedly gonna fill up like the power vacuum that the three primary walls left after left behind thinking. after we trapped them. Yeah, of course, of course, our theory is like because all the demons are outside again, and and there was there was a weird thing. There was a there is a weird discussion like at the end of of Soul Reaper when you when Diablo or or the plan of these mystics is fusion all the three primevals into one, right? Yep. It was the Super Diablo that we killed at the end of, of Diablo 3 campaign story. Um, and then the theory is like, well, when they got released or killed, did they, they didn't die, but that entity, will that entity still be one? Or will the primevals go back to be three separate? Because we're, we're theorizing think, of like... Yeah. They actually mentioned that the thing that they trap on the Soulstone is all only one, like construct one yes. big as soul yeah yeah but that uh, once it was they, they say this on the lower and world building panel yep, uh, yeah, yeah that the that basically all the little pieces that construct this big soul yes is trying to just separate and go back to an individual ah cool so they, they so yeah we're, so because I'll assume, we're, yeah 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 so i'll assume that we won't see that big uh super prime you will all right again we'll see we'll probably encounter again the the classics yes so which we're... again will make a lot of sense because people love like the classic prime evils, yeah yeah <laughs> so the interesting part of this is like first is a non-linear campaign like this this game is now a non-linear campaign so you can go anywhere and second it has a huge open world to the point that they yeah. give us mount, mounts so there's like the diablo heroes now have horses in these mount movements and it's like they show us part of the map that they're building is like i don't know it's like five times all the maps of all the three past games something like that <laughs> maybe something like that it, it looks huge it looks huge open world amazing so or theories is like they say they're going to be DLCs. They say they're going to be uh, all this this kind of stuff um, in the world. And our theory is like, oh, they have all these other regions to explore, right? Yeah, they, they only show, or they, they kind of show the scope of the game, of, the, of this new game in the world of Sanctuary. And there's still a lot of Sanctuary left to, to explore. To explore. So it'll be pretty cool if, yeah, if the expansions, DLCs, slash whatever, take us to all these different regions. Yeah, my hope, my hope because I dream. I am a dreamer. I am a dreamer. <laughs> and Lucho is like, you shouldn't, but my hopes <laughs> is that they complete the, the actual, like the entire map of Sanctuary. That's my uh, hope. That that'll the, be really cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that will happen. That'll be really cool. Yeah, that's that's my hope that they complete the entire map of Sanctuary because they announced that they're gonna do expansion and they have like a lot of material to work with and all the stuff and they they giving us five big regions, but there's so much Sanctuary out there that I'm hoping that by the end of Diablo 4 run, like in the future in 2013, if we're alive, <laughs> <laughs> they they have all the map of Sanctuary. We've seen back all the other primevals and the stuff. And and yeah, it'd be it'd be very interesting. What do you think, Nick? Hmm. Yeah, it would be cool to see that someday, yeah. sometime. Yeah, we would like to explore like an open world of Diablo Four. Yeah, it it, it, it looks really really nice. Uh, it's. I think that this kind of open world games are are fantastic. 
because nobody tells you what to do. You can just go and the game tells you, okay, you can't go here because it's hard. I, I think that will be a very, very nice experience. Cool. Cool. Yeah, we are all agree that it will benefit from the open world nature of the war. You still have like instances of dungeons and stuff. Yeah, the dungeons are still like randomly generated. Yeah. Private yeah. instances for the party and stuff. Yeah, and bringing that. back from the from all, all the things that they learn about uh, Diablo 3 dungeon generator and greater rifts and all those sort of stuff. But we very and, and No, and, and not only that, but like also randomly generated maps are part of Diablo identity. Like, yeah, by now. Like it, it wouldn't be Diablo if it is not randomly generated. Isometric, randomly generated dungeons. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So we have five continuous regions, big as map, beautiful, different biomes. We have swamp. We have snowy mountains with gothic undertones. We have a uh, classic bleak, like Scotland kind of yeah. place, <laughs> which is very close to the name. We have a desert and we have like a ruins place. That's, those are all five, all five regions that we're going to yes. explore in the game. They're, they're very beautiful still, like holding to that, like super gritty, super like very dark lit, su super like violent where, where the blood is, is blood. It looks like very realistic, very thematic. I, I think everybody loved that, that they could bring to the 20th century that look of Diablo 2 and Diablo 1, that, that darkness and that seriousness and that way that, that Diablo scares you like in the past games. Yeah, right? it, it is definitely darker. Yeah, it is definitely it definitely doesn't need needs a light. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna talk about the classes. So technically, like we're we're expecting five classes, but in this reveal we have three. Yep. Sorcerers, barbarian, and druid. And I was uh, uh, and I was telling Lucio that we still have two archetypes to cover here. Right. We still have Which like are? the assassin archetype is one. And, and the fighter archetype, right? Which are kind of covered everywhere, right? We still miss it. Like, for sure, we're going to have a demon hunter or something close to it, or an assassin mm. type. Maybe. Right? And then we have one more class, which can be the monk coming back. I think the monk is a very popular class from the other three. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. You're not sure? I'm telling you to speculate. Speculate, my friends. <laughs> I'm not sure. You're not I'm... sure? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a rogue could come. That would be a nice callback to, to the original Diablo. Yeah, the rogue will be like, could, could cover that assassin slash demon hunter archetype, right? Yeah. What do you think, Nick? Will be the two archetypes that we're missing? Or maybe something new, something different, something like a pyromancer or something like that. Like a pyromancer? Yeah, something that burns everything and everyone. Okay. The problem is that elemental magic is always left to a sorcerer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's why we were talking about like monk or necromancer. The necromancer was like very popular too. But that one, like, I don't know. That uh, one is more like... The, the necromancer... It seems to overlap a little bit with the druid. Yeah. Or well, maybe we're gonna have six classes like the other three when when like the uh the archetypes are all cover. What? Didn't they say that it's gonna have five? Yeah, they said they're gonna have five, but maybe we, we can have six. Why not? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you why not. <laughs> all right, <time. laughs> fair enough. <laughs> so so what we'll maybe see. in a DLC a sixth class. That, yeah, probably. Uh, Necromancer on Diablo 3. Yeah. No, Diablo 3 has now seven classes. Yeah, yeah, but they added classes in DLCs. Yeah, that's for sure. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, true. So true. probably at launch they will have five, and then on a the DLC they'll have a sixth one or something like that. Yep. To give more life to the game. I will definitely agree to that. <laughs> I will definitely yes. I will definitely say yes, yes. I will like that. I feel like in the 
in that rogue yep. archetype, archetype is yep. where they have more freedom to innovate. Yeah, to do something different. Do you like the, uh, do you like the Demon Hunter in Diablo 3? You find like an interesting archetype? Uh, um, yes and no. I've never liked li really the rogue assassin archetypes in RPGs. It's not All my right. not my flavor, but yeah, I like, I, I, I would like the monk. Like, I'm a big monk fan. Monk fan. Monk fan. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I never like that. really like the monk. I, I really love that kind of like holy fighter archetype, uh, very Buddhist. Like, I don't know. I like that for no. some reason. I, I'm a big fan of that. So and boring. I know. <laughs> anyway, so we saw sorceress and he kind of like, uh, he, he, like we we have to know that this is very early uh, no, development super cycle, early. super early development cycle. We're for, we're waiting for this game to like release around I don't know two years and a half in the future minimum. Maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, at best yeah. So so I feel like they brought a lot of like things back from um from Diablo three in this show in the know? gameplay yeah. yeah in the gameplay showing that we have uh. But from the sorceress, it's like very, like very, very classic sorceress. She had like access to electric, access to fire stuff, and access to blizzard. The effects were amazing, by the way. They were super toned down, which I really like. Yeah, we, like it, it is interesting because it actually creates a good contrast when you like through your spells and you actually see the impact that they have because of the of the good contrast between. The toned down nature of the spells and the greediness of the game, so that makes that that that, that makes feel that gives you the the sensation that your spells are actually like more powerful instead of like a bunch of like lights, a bunch of light shows. So you can actually see the impact of the spells when they're being cast for the toned down nature of of this gameplay that we saw. So the sorcerer is like very standard. Do you like the sorcerer's archetype? Yeah, that that one I don't really care. You don't really care, Nick? Do you care about the sorcerer's archetype? No, I usually like more like the the ones that you don't like the the rogues and the dex builds and stuff like that. All right, fair enough. <laughs> then we have the barbarian, which again, in terms of skills, was very normal. They it's not bring... normal. It's the standard. Diablo okay. Barbarian yeah, that we exactly. have had all for, the games forever. so yeah. far. So. <laughs> he's like the, <laughs> the, the years. Yeah, he's like the poster child of Diablo 4. <laughs> no, if, if, if there is one standard character for Diablo, is the Barbarian. And it, there are things that you always expect from him. So the leap attack, the Wilma Barbarian, the, the scream, that kind of stuff. The, yeah. the war cry. <laughs> The Warcry, the, the Call of the Ancients, the, the super standard. But the interesting part is like, they put weapon slots for his abilities. That's the super he has, Yeah, he has four weapon slots. Yeah, he has four weapon slots. It's crazy. So it's like it's a so, heavy weapon slot, like a two-handed weapon it's slot. Two heavy weapon, like two two-handed slots. Yeah. And two one-handed slots. Yes. And yeah, and apparently depending on the attack or the skill that you're using, you, use you will switch to uh, accordingly to attack. Which is super weird because in terms of balance, super because cool. you can. But, but, but think about it in terms of balance. You can have like four, two more legendaries extra than all the other classes. They, they can just balance how how the stats are affected. Like How powerful are the actual legendaries for the Barbarian only, right? Because No, no, no not this. that. All right. Like, you can have them equipped, but not all of, the, not all of them um, are active. You're saying that? Are active at the same time. Mm, or it will be probably active, only active the ones that are that you are actually using, because <laughs> the barbarian will not have four arms. So if the barbarian is using one of the two hundred uh, weapons, all the passives of the weapon will be active, but while the other ones are just inactive, and then it will switch. That could be it, but. We like depending of that makes sense depending of like if you're spamming just one ability and then you're using that weapon primarily, 
because the weapons are tied to the abilities that he uses. So that that yep. could be that could be like turning on and off certain properties of the legendaries that you're using or whatever to keep balance that class. But it looks it looks very cool. It looks very good. Like I never liked the barbarian in the Diablo. I know. But this looks like something I would like to play with, especially for the four weapons thingy. And finally, we got the Druid, which we haven't seen since Diablo 2, right? Yep. Which Diablo was... Two. Yeah. The exp- one of the expansions. One of the expansions. And it was fantastic. It was very fluid. Uh, the transformation was very fluid. The good boys that follow him were very cool. And we find out that he was not... In the initial lineup, but the artist convinced the game developers to put in him. And it was like definitely the showcase of the gameplay. It was the highlight. Everybody loved the Druid. Everybody was asking for the Druid. Yeah, more like that. Yeah. <laughs> so he yeah, Everyone was to... asking for him. I don't know. What? Everyone was asking for him. Yeah. yeah, everybody was asking for him. Like for years, everybody was like, oh yeah, there's got to be a Druid expansion in Diablo 3. It's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And now we know that it's but, not, but it's going to come into the other four. Yeah, but that happened because we didn't get that much content in the Aula 3 after release, like after Reaper of Souls. We, we didn't get much content. Yeah, <clears throat> but it was good. It was good reveal for the Druid. Yeah. So, yeah. People like it. People love it. It seems super fun. People love the Druid. In that, in he's that a big story. boy. He, he's, he, he's a good boy. <laughs> he has two good boys, and he probably is a good boy because he can transform into a werewolf and a bear. Anyways, we love the seamless like transformations. Uh, I ran back, like, it's it, it very seamless, like changing from a bear, and then the combat continues, and you change f- to a werewolf and tie your like elemental abilities and that sort of stuff. It was like very cool to see, to actually see the combat of Diablo Beam. A lot more fluid than we have right now, right? Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely one one of the things that they are trying to bring from the Outlet Three is the combat, which is probably the best part of the game. Yeah, de- definitely the best part of the Outlet Three is like the the combat fluid and all the stuff. And in the technical side, we have talent trees, we have rune systems, and we have the classic. We still have the classic skills from Diablo 3, technically, right? Yeah, the yeah, the skill system is similar to to the current one, it seems yeah. that way. The we have yeah, we have talent skill, talent trees. Yep. And rune words, which is something new not new, but like a returning thing from from the original Diablo. Yeah, I think they took they took the runes that are inside the skills and they put it into a the into a different like system. Yeah, they took the rune wars that the current the yeah, other three skills have, and they put it into something different. Yeah, which is very interesting. I I, I prefer that they dis- disconnect those sort of uh, systems, so you can have like more variation into what you can do into your class, right? Right now, yeah, like in the current in the other three, it doesn't feel like two different systems. It's just one big system. Yeah, one thing. Super that's, and that's that's one of the biggest complaints of Diablo 3 is like it's super like limited of what you can do in terms of builds and that sort of stuff, in terms of the ruins and the of the runes and the abilities that you can take inside the game. Yeah. And this just like opens it and adds a talent tree into the game on top of all that, which is what we want. We want more variety, more stuff to push the builds. And, and yeah, that's great. That was that was a great reveal. Yeah, it's it's hard to talk about that right now. We have to to yeah, see more of the system. Yeah, it's a system that's gonna evolve and change, like through all the development of, of the entire thing. It's definitely gonna change. Yeah, and now we're gonna talk about like something that I was not expecting, but apparently we're gonna have for sure PvP in the Apple Three. Yeah, and it's gonna yeah. be from the ground up. That that was expected. That was expected. Yeah. Yeah. Why you would expect it? Everyone in like all the Diablo community can complain when the Diablo tree didn't have a PvP. That was one of the biggest complaints of the game. 
All right. But have you, like, and then they transfer a person from Heroes of the Storm, was in charge of a lot of the systems, to work into Diablo 3 to do this system from the ground up. Because they're talking about, like, oh, yeah, we were thinking about PvP from the start because otherwise we cannot, like, add it into the systems of the game. Yeah, because right. they tried it. Yeah. They want it, they, they want it. So what do you think about PvP Diablo 3? Like, isometric PvP, Nick. I don't know. That's that's odd, maybe. Odd? Yeah, I don't know how to yeah, feel about it either. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 because you're know. not real Diablo fans. Probably. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 we are not real Diablo fans. All right. I guess we're not real Diablo fans. We are you not. never collected ears in Diablo 2 or Diablo 3. Oh, yeah, the, the ear thingy. Yeah, that came in. <laughs> and you kill people and, like, collected ears from it. But, yeah, yeah so <laughs> they're building PvP, and in that same stage, there's supposed to be PvP zones, like regions of the game where you go and you do pure PvP, or, like, the, you can just attack people, I imagine, right? I would imagine, yeah, that there are just zones with monsters, and you can just attack people randomly. Yeah, which 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 is it? Which opens these interesting avenues inside the game, um, of like, ah, oh, yeah, you're dungeoning with somebody, and you're like, cool, nice, we're, we're pals. He helps you to kill the monster. You got some drops, and then before you go back home, he just backstabs you and runs with your loot. Yeah, that's what's gonna happen. <laughs> Like yeah, more probably. often than not, uh, which I don't know if it adds or subtracts from the from from the experience. I think it adds because it makes the world feel more dangerous than than not. But imagine imagine this in hardcore. Yeah. Right. With life is hard, man. So you play yeah. like half, like like Nick is a big fan of 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 Dark Souls. So you kind of play like an open world Dark Souls, where you can just die from a random dude that you find out. Not even like get invaded, just like die from a random dude that you run into the world. Life How is it hard. happens. Life yeah, happens too. Plus hard. <laughs> For example, th th there's a uh, on Dark Souls three. Yeah. There's some. I don't know if it's a ring or something like that, that you can get invited uh, and you can go and help the person move through a map and then you can attack him and kill him. Something like that and you can get the, the stuff that you get when you kill someone on other world. Cool. So probably it will happen a lot on Diablo. <laughs> So yeah, we have, we it, bring it, that. It's expected. All right, we bring that greatness, and if you want to play hardcore, it's gonna be super stream. You have to be super sh safe of not losing your character of two random dudes. It's called hardcore. Yeah. It's called hardcore. Yep. <laughs> I think that's gonna add a very interesting side of the community of the Diablo of people like who play hardcore and uh, they see all this risk. And the same with the multiplayer players. But be beyond that, we have like. Um, Public events in this game, now that we are in an open world, we, we were present with a big public event of like eight people we saw in the in the gameplay video, something like that, eight, ten people. They, they never said any numbers yeah, of or the, the size of the instances. What they say is that what they are aiming for is for the world to feel empty, like not really empty, but that you wouldn't encounter pe uh, players all the time. So let's assume that the normal instances are fairly small, like maybe I don't know, twelve players or something like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We saw around eight in the in the gameplay that we saw. Yeah, but that, but but probably the instances for like like the little songs where public events and world bosses are are going to be. Yep. They're probably going to allow more players on those specific songs. Yeah, we're talking. And, like the, yeah. No, and as you were saying, it's probably like a seamless matchmaking inside the instance once you get into a zone of the of the event or or the world boss. Yeah, we were theorizing that you will have like a zone when you get matchmakes 
with more people and the outside that's on you are kind of like a lower tier matchmaker but inside the big like public event zones you you have a higher tier matchmaker when you get matchmaker with like more people than you usually are in your instance of the open world technically speaking right that was our theory about this public event because they look very interesting like see a bunch of dudes like hitting this big monster it always gives you that 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 thrill of like oh my oh my god this boss is very hard to take down i cannot do it alone right that's the sensation that they they're going to give you yeah i i really find it interesting the idea of world bosses i don't know and you guys have played a world of warcraft is yeah yeah i don't know how to explain it <laughs> like in world of warcraft there were world bosses like just big ass bosses difficult to take just yeah. in the open world in certain areas really all right yeah and and you will just like you will see just groups of people in public chat getting together to kill them and oh, just really? random people like 50 random people <laughs> like really like okay. saying, oh there is a boss here <laughs> yeah like looking for the bosses because they don't they are not there all the time they spam certain points so yeah, people yeah. were in the hunt and when someone find it like everyone will travel there and like like they will try to coordinate <laughs> to kill it because they're like really hard bosses to kill yeah and this this looks like kind of hardish well we, we saw one and it was like at the beginning zone so i imagine that that's not the hardest thing to kill in the world it, yeah it but, uh, but my, my point is that I, I i would like to see if a similar phenomenon is going to happen in the aula for like you will coordinate, like you will see a lot of people getting together to kill these big monsters. That that would be really cool. Yeah, that would be that would be really fantastic. Opening like this this sort of collaboration in Diablo three. I wonder if they gotta put like, I don't know, some sort of like raid like thing in Diablo three at this point. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Nah. They're very close to the it's... building. Like a, an interesting like raid like activity in an isometric. Dungeon crawler. That would be. I, I don't, it's not Diablo style. But... It's not Diablo style. You say no. No. What do you think, Nick? I don't know. Anything could cop happen. Yeah. The game is in development, and uh, I think that probably they will try it, and if they like the feel, they will keep it, because that's like this award. It works. They try something. If they like it, they keep it. That's true, but but the Diablo community is very, very particular about what they want in their games. That is true, but they're they're like the Diablo community is very like a lone community that you play in like small groups or like by yourself all the time. Yeah, that that has always been the the feel of Diablo. That, that it's kind of a solo experience, maybe. Yeah. But there, yeah. What do you say, Nick? I don't know. Maybe, maybe from a business point of view, uh, they will try to lure more people into the game. So they will try to find new ways to making the game more approachable and trying to make the community more open to bringing on more people and uh, taking in up stuff like the rates you never know they can try it uh at first like yeah. the person like isometric diablo like raid like go and kill uh, and find one of the primary wolves and that could be a raid right i'm, I'm not saying i'm i'm just i'm not saying it couldn't work yeah i'm not saying they wouldn't try it i'm just yeah. saying that the diablo community is really picky with what they like and and as you yeah. said, the Diablo experience is usually a solo, like, it's in a weak part, like a solo experience of just you being out there. Yeah. So if it is required to have right teams to do stuff, people in the Diablo community are going to complain. All because right. that's not what the game has been so far. Yeah, you're going to feel like a backlash from the community, but you're already giving them open world with public, like... A lot, you get, you're giving like the foundation of like this sort of like social play change, right? Um, it, nah, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, no? You need a co cooperation to actually kill these public event bosses? It, it, it'll be cool. 
but you really don't have to cooperate. Like you have to all be there. Yeah, that's it. Like it's not like the game. It's not like the bosses will have like wipe mechanics or anything like that. You never know. Maybe. <laughs> they probably <laughs> won't. <laughs> Maybe just kill everybody and that's it. And if you're in hardcore, you're dead. <laughs> You can have a boss like that, like a, a toxic one that just still feel. Anyways, like there's ways to do it, I think. Right? There's interesting ways yeah. to do it. I'm not saying there are no ways to do it. That's the ju- you say Did that you they- listen to me? Yeah, you say that the community will not like it, right? I'm, I'm just saying that the Diablo feeling is not that. Oh, fair enough. All right. That's okay. all. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not possible. Yeah, of yeah. Course we, it's we, possible. We, we, yeah. yeah it's, it's the problem is people. People usually don't like when their mindset is changed for something. And I agree with you, Lucho, in that sense that probably the community won't like it. But something that I think that communities must begin begin to improve its accepting new things that I think that uh, okay I, I will keep my ideas of communities for further in the podcast <laughs> uh, go on no I'm, I'm just gonna say that sure they should but the people playing yeah. Diablo are a bunch of old folks like me who don't like change and, <laughs> and we want our Diablo game to keep feeling like Diablo <laughs> yeah but <laughs> if it's Diablo 4 probably it should have something different uh, maybe maybe not because be. if you only want to have the, the, the same old game just you only do uh, that's what some you... people want it's, it's like Starcraft Starcraft you don't want it to change. You only want better graphics. So what do the devs do? Okay, you have better graphics, new graphics, new textures, but the game is exactly the same. Yeah, and 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 that's what some people in the Diablo community want. Yeah, probably that that would be a very good uh, relaunch of Diablo One, Diablo Two, doing it again with new graphics. Put it free to play, and you can buy the new textures. And probably you uh, would have lots and lots of people very happy, and lots of people would play for pay for that. There you go. Yeah, that that that's true. But I don't know. I, I feel like the the Diablo community is not so welcoming of of change some changes not change in general but like some things like, like diablo has a really specific feeling to it yeah okay I, I must agree that a game must feel in some sense but the mechanics can change you, they you can to keep the feel but the mechanics can change and red says it's a mechanic how you make it feel, it's completely up to the game designers. It is. Uh, I agree and, and, and disagree a little bit. Like, I agree that you can make it feel however you want in the game. But I also feel like there is an enviering part of the Aulu being like this small party game. Like there are just the four of you going through dungeons and killing stuff and instead of being like sixteen or I don't know, something like that. Some great size kind of thing. Yeah, like like where where would you find sixteen heroes in the in 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 the world, like that's kind of the thing. I won't. I won't say sixteen heroes. I would probably say eight. Even that, it's too much. 
But they already have the technology. Anyways. <laughs> it's not the technology. It's, it, uh, uh, it's not the technology. They have the power. The they have the power to do it. <laughs> okay. It's, it's like what, when you're playing D&D or some sort of that games. Uh, that you know that the parties are, are small. And, okay. Having a, a big ass party of 16, it's hard. But... You can keep the feel of the classic RPG, the pen and paper RPG, with 16 people. It's strange, but you can keep that feel. I understand your point, but I think that's doable. Um, 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 it will take a lot of convincing for the community to... To accept yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it mostly depends on how the devs make you feel it. Yeah. If you start feeling it like some other game, well, I will agree that it wouldn't fit in the game. Fair enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. So that's, that's our piece about that. <laughs> And now in a more small thing, we will, we, we will have uh, the kind of isolation they want to achieve with the game in, in that the dungeons, the journey dungeons are like very small instances, only four players, and they have this interesting key stuff. And like when you go into a dungeon, generally you have your own instance of random generated dungeon, which is very interesting. Like that will take you off of the big open world game, and there is no loading screens. They they wanted to achieve like seamlessly exploration to into the world, which is very interesting. And they say that they have affixes and stuff to change the dungeon exploration. So they're gonna take that from I think Path to Exile. They, they does it very well with their uh, map system, which is technically you make your own affixes in a dungeon. So they're going to take like this, the greater rift system. So you take a key to enter a dungeon and then you add affixes to it. It could be like bigger bosses, more mobs. It could be like a thing that chase you. It could be like, maybe I imagine that maybe like it's very early, but I imagine that some is like, if you die in it, you reset the dungeon. It could be stuff like that. It, maybe they're affixes for luck to find more gear when you go into it and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I, I would imagine that all those things are on the table. Yeah. How to modify the... I think it's interesting the system of this. So, yeah, so, so basically the idea is that you will find keys yeah. that already have the... Affixes? The modifiers. But I think there will be, like, some keys that you can add the modifiers to, right? They didn't mention that. They didn't mention? No. Nope. Mm, okay. I will I will they, imagine that is they, they, they could be a system where you can like uh, like as in you're thinking, part of no, that that's not what they say. What they that's say not what that, they say. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. That's the speculation no, that, from that, my part. Okay, then you yeah. should make it clear because yeah, that's yeah, not what they say. What they say is that the keys are gonna drop with uh fix uh, modifiers yeah. and that they're at some point drop a lot of keys to you so that you can choose the ones that you wanna keep and you can dismantle the ones that you don't like. All right, so maybe we can have like so. So we probably will have like a farming key thingy. Definitely, it's gonna thing. become a thing. Yeah, if that's a thing. if this is the final system, farming keys is gonna become a thing, and there are probably gonna be uh, combinations of modifiers that people are gonna prefer. Overallers, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah that's a very system that could, could could be explored maybe. Or like crafting that, I'm, I'm just saying that's what they say. Yeah, that's like, what they that's say. How yeah. it's... You're absolutely right. That's, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. All right. So that's about the dungeons, which looks very cool. That modifiers, like, it, it adds, like, infinite repairability to the game, which yeah. is very much appreciated. <laughs> the, the, the only problem that I see with that is that there is going to be a really small set of accepted... Modifiers. Uh, modifiers, yeah. But that's that's bound to happen. Like if that's they don't balance it, if they don't balance it well, like 
And and I yeah, feel like that system needs a proper balance because like if you have like these very bad modifiers, and and the reward is not worth it, they're not gonna do it. But if you have like very bad modifiers with like a very high reward, then maybe keeping the key is a consideration, right? Yeah, I know, but that's still like I can see something like. A guide of four keys that is basically gonna tell you these are the best things. four modifiers that you want, uh, and anything else like that is trash. All right, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I feel like to avoid that, they should like have this like very bad modifier and keys to give you like a high reward or a unique reward or something like that, right? To like to to make it worth it to keep it. Even if yeah. it's not, even if they're not like the optimal things to go and farm, they sh to avoid that because that's gonna happen. Like I agree with you, that's gonna happen no matter what, right? People are gonna like find out the best way to to farm keys and do dungeons, right? Yeah. But I think to balance off that, I think we have to like put some good rewards into the 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 hardish modifier keys. I think that will be the way to fix it. I hope they find it the answer <laughs> yeah yeah and we have a, a decent system in, in keys because it sounds very interesting besides that we have like new systems in terms of movement we have escape classes as usual we in in, in diablo like this was I, I feel like in the original design this was not considered but it became as a thing that everybody uses in diablo 3 Right. Every if you go watch every build in Diablo three, the majority of the build has like teleport or like horse or like a big movement ability to escape from the bosses' clutches. And now they're making this like as like a staple into the movement of the game to the point that they add a dodge and like a zero cooldown of dodge in the in the space bar. You can like dodge off of bosses. Yeah, you have a little stuff. dash. Like. Yeah. So, so they add in that that side of like of combat into the system, and on top of that, the add like because they're putting an emphasis into movement and strategy, like movement strategy into the game into the combat system, they add uh, boss damage, like boss power break to modify the way the boss behaves, right? So you can like you you add like layers of of a strategy into the into the into the core of the game, which is very interesting. Not only that, they also added, uh, how is it called? Like a CC break ability. Yeah. So all the class are going to have a CC break, which I think is pretty interesting. Like it gets you free out of jail car, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll add to the strategy of fighting a, a certain boss, which has like hard CC of like frozen or that sort of stuff, modifiers. Like, generally a crazy scene in Diablo OP. They get you CC and you're Yeah, dead. those are probably become more important in hardcore when getting frozen and then something exploding in your face is definitely yeah. going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so they added that to the, to the movement system, which is great. The animations are great in, in that regard. Which I, I, love, I love that sort of stuff. And the break part of the monsters is very interesting that if you break something yeah. part, the monsters behave differently. I feel like that is kind of Monster Hunter inspired, you know? <laughs> like, well, yeah, you're right. Like, you cut certain part of the boss that you're fighting and then it changes his, his behavior. Yeah, so right? like, yep. It's attacking patterns and stuff and the reach of the attacks. And, yep. Yeah. I imagine that there's certain points when you don't want to break certain parts because the monster becomes more dangerous. So you have to change mm. the way you attack him. Maybe. Yeah, which adds, like, again, a layer of strategy into the bosses, which is very interesting. What are you thinking about, Nick? I like that mechanic of breaking parts. That's probably older than Monster Hunter. I was thinking of that. I even saw that on the first Souls, I think. Oh, and... Monster Hunter is older. Yes. Oh, yes? Yes, the Monster Hunter is, like, an older okay. franchise, like, very old. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. My bad then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I, I, yeah, but, but but that mechanic it's cool. Yeah. Really, breaking parts of whatever big 
thing, thing you're that you're fighting and getting stuff for breaking it. That's maybe, nice. Maybe that will add that like stuff breaking. They didn't see anything about that, but definitely changes the way that you approach fights against the big bosses, which is so good. Adds flavor to the combat of, of the Outlaw. Stop it being like super linear about going there and just attacking your boss with whatever good sting you had and dodging his attack. But you have to think where to attack the boss, how to attack the boss, which is just like fantastic. And then into yeah. the nitty gritty of stuff, we have like the for the time. Just, just, just for the record, the first yes. Monster Hunter yeah. came in 2004. 2004. How old is uh, the Dark Souls? I think it's like nine, 2009. If I'm not wrong, I don't know. Yeah, it's like yeah, around yeah. that time. Yeah, that's a very old. Yeah, I think 2009 or 11 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for the record, and now that the nitty gritty, we have kind of like a confirmation so far because again, the game's still in development about the rarity of the items that we're gonna have in terms of systems. Yeah, so we're gonna have normal, magic, and rare, which is like standard. We have legendary yeah. and set items in the same category. When they have, they they're gonna try to put less emphasis into the set, so it doesn't happen like in Diablo Three, where sets are, for the most part, the, king. <laughs> the only thing that you're aiming for. Yeah, exactly. So for the most part, are king. Or, like you have the option to do a a, a legacy of nightmares when you just put legendaries, but. In general, everybody does sets, and, and that's it, right? Because yeah. the, 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 the thing of Nightmares takes too long. And then beyond that, we have Ancient Legendary, which as classic Diablo 3 is just the legendary and the set items, but better. But on but top of that... More powerful. Yeah, more powerful. But on top of that, which is the interesting thing, we have Mythic items. Yeah. Which are a take, a Diablo 3 take on the exotics slots. And the exotic trend, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We have the exotic trends, which is like the, the way to break the system of legendaries and item that has been going into the uh, looter shooter genre. And is li yep. limited, in this case, is limited to only one slot. You can only have one exotic on your equip. In the majority of the games, you generally can have two, which is like the weapon and something that you equip. In this, yeah. they're saying that they're going to limit it to one and it's going to be like crazy and revolutionary and like exotic like right sure but the problem is that for the outlaw you only have for the most part one weapon equipped yes like you only have one weapon at a time <laughs> so yeah so it kind of makes sense that you have like one exotic yeah. in your entire thing right which is very interesting they actually take they actually take it like the lessons of the system that they invent right <laughs> yep uh, and the evolution of it and bringing their own take on it with Mythic. This, this for me, as a, as a builder, it was like very interesting. I'm looking forward to see these Mythic items and how they're going to work and they, how they're going to change the way you play the game, which is just fantastic. And then a little take into the runes. So they, they, they're modifying how, how they're working was the when and an effect of, of this Lucha. It's, I mean, if you have seen how gems work in PoE. Yes. Which say like, it's, it's like a super, yeah, so the rune system, it seems that it's going to be like a super simplified version of that when you have like a rune that needs an, like that has an activation condition. So oh, okay. when something happens, this is the effect, or if something yes. happens, this is the effect, and then you have an enhancement for that effect. Oh, yeah. Oh, this looks like... I, I love that they're taking that from uh, from Path of Exile because that's the most interesting thing in the modification of the skills in Path of Exile, the runes. Yeah, system. it's probably not going to be as deep as yeah. Path of Exile system, because Path of Exile but it insane. seems inspired by that idea of... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you have this thing that has an effect. Yes. And then you have a modifier or that, and the effect is on the skills that you have already. So, so if this happened, this skill broke something extra or stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. And then you can augment that modification. Or... Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I think, think it's pretty cool. I think it's amazing. Yeah, what do you think about these systems, Nick? Think about the exotic system, like, and the runes. Uh, these are nice for... This... This sort of stuff is nice because you have more 
custom ability. But I don't know. I think it's nice. Oh, let's keep doing that. All right. It is <laughs> nice indeed. <laughs> it sounds really interesting. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited yeah. about the runes. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like very cool, cool systems on top of all the cool systems. It it makes uh, the game in another sense a little bit harder because you think to you, you must think a lot of what do you want, what do you want to enhance, and okay. yeah, yep. And Absolutely. and I feel like that's that's something a lot of people complain about the Diablo Three that it's yeah. too easy to super linear, yeah, to master in a sense. Yep. I don't know what do you think about yeah. that, but that's how the community feels. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like in in in, in that's that's a very sentiment of why, at a certain point, the longevity of Diablo Three is stopped because they don't have like those very expansive systems that when you can explore. Yeah, they they like deepness. Yeah, in, in some of the systems. Yeah, yeah, they like deepness. So they bring in deepness back in a variety of systems. So that's always yeah. fantastic. So if, if we think about it, we, we have like the, the legendary sets abilities to modify whatever you're doing. Now we have the mythic abilities to modify whatever you're doing. Now you have like rune trees and you still have the selection of abilities of Diablo 3, right? And now you have the runes. So you have yeah. like five points of, mo of modification of whatever you want to do. Which is always fantastic for builds and and creativity and all sort of stuff. All right, all that is great. Into the side of how this game is going to be longev, is, is going to be like uh, supported through the times of the future. We have the base game as a sixty dollar purchase confirmed. We have expansions that they're going to come. They say they're going to do expansions for the game, and after that, we're going to have cosmetic microtransactions. Right. This information comes from an interview of Queen69, one of the uh, biggest like streamers of Diablo 3 when he started. Um, that now he streams like Battle of Excel and World of Warcraft. Uh, and they, they, he asked about this and they said, yes, we are going to put cosmetic micro microtransactions into the game to keep it supported in. Everybody's happy about it. Like... Like yeah. they will like because they know if there's a, a healthy co cosmetic microtransaction, they're gonna do they're gonna have a lot of support for the game in the community. Yeah, they're gonna put out put out more content. Yeah, probably. And we have a big emphasis on uh, customization in the game this time around, right? In Diablo, you can just like pick up your your character and that's it. In this one, you can like modify like the tattoos, the face, the way it looks, like the base character. And on top of that, they're gonna bring the transmog system from Diablo Three, when you can like unlock the the stuff that you ha and how you want to look, and that will build into the cosmetic side for the microtransaction. So, for the people who like to uh, customize and absolutely be unique in the world, this is great news. Yeah, that's that's a big part as usual. Yeah. Yeah, the cosmetic and, and look unique in the game. That's just giving more tools to the people to look more unique and, and say, this is my Nephilim unique with all the fills and whistles. And, and as usual, we're going to see a pink rainbow Nephilim at some point. Yeah, <laughs> probably. That, that's always important. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and for the final of this, there's not going to be enough life mode for Diablo, 3, for Diablo 4. <laughs> Any opinions of no offline? Uh, no, nah, this day and age, not really. I, I'm, I don't care that much about that. Yeah, yeah. If you like, is 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 gonna be a requirement for what the game wants to do, right? For for the generator, for the public events, and for the all this all the interesting stuff. But for the people in the consoles, they can have two player co couch cop. If you're on a console, Switch, uh, Xbox, uh, PS4, you can have your buddy playing by your side, Diablo Four. Which is very very cool. Yeah. And that's that's it about Diablo Four. Anything you want to add? Are you excited? Do you want to depart in the hype train? <laughs> I am really excited. It's it's still too early, probably for most of the systems that they yeah. talk about, yeah. and they probably have things that they have haven't even shown. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm excited. I, I like the look. I love the all the art pieces that they show. Yep. 
I was telling you yesterday, I love all of them. We want all the art pieces. I want, yeah. I want an art book made out of all the yeah, I wanna, art that they show. I want a, I want a big picture yeah, of like... Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I want a big picture of like Lilith and uh, and this like kind of Romanic art piece, you know, when, when it's the dude and Lilith in the center, like very classic, very classic art piece. Like the art of this game is amazing. It's very good. Any any opinion on the game? Are you hyped for it, Nick? I won't get on the hype train like in a year or so. Choo choo. So. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> Stamps your expectations. I, I just wait. Stamps your expectations. They they repeatedly said this is not even a Blizzard. Not even Blizzard soon. Yeah, not even a Blizzard soon. So this is gonna take a while. <laughs> we yeah. gotta. We're gonna probably have like I, my 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 expectations for like in two years and something. We're gonna probably have a big beta because I think this this game needs like with all the systems that they're gonna put on it. This game definitely needs a beta testing phase, like kind of an ample one to to be like polished in the release and be great. I think it needs yeah, for probably, yeah. everything that we yeah from everything that we discussed from the PvP and all the different systems that they want to achieve. It definitely needs a big beta test play, so I'm gonna put it like around two years and a half, and probably launching in like three years. So we're gonna see in 2023, probably be playing Diablo 4. So temper your expectations. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 farther away, probably. Yeah. It for sure looks promising. Like for sure looks yeah. like they sure they want feedback. They are in. A, they have like a good idea and a good direction, but they're working towards. And and it also seems like they have taken the right uh, lessons from their previous games. Like the Diablo yeah. Three gameplay, like the combat mechan combat feels really good in Diablo Three. Yeah. So they're trying to keep that, but they do know that the skill system and stuff like that is not that deep, and the optimization. Yep. On end game is super reduced. Yep. So they're trying to fix those problems and and bring back some of the some of the fan favorites from the older games. So. Yes. So they they seem to be taking the right decisions right now. We'll see how they execute on a lot of them and and the demo that they show seemed really fun. It's, yep, it looks really good. It looks. Really everyone, good. yeah, I, I was I was looking, I was watching some some of the community people that they invited to play. The yep. reactions and Aaron seemed really happy about, about the current state of the of of the development. Absolutely, everyone everybody was very static, very happy with everything that they got shown, which is always good news that the developers are in a in a good track to do this game. Yep. Yep. All right. So into a second big reveal thingy. Overwatch two, my friends. What do you think about Overwatch 2? What is it, Overwatch 2, Lucho? <laughs> what is Overwatch 2, Nick? Somebody tell me. Okay, it is. It's... Go ahead. I don't know. This this two point. This two. It's an odd name. I don't know if it's a ranting or something like that. It looks a, like a big expansion for the game that we have uh, refresh on the engine and I think that this game is on the first when they did the first how is it called uh, archive events yep uh, lots of people told them that the experience was very nice that uh, they wanted more of that, and I think that they were listening, and they did this. They remaked, they, no, remake no, they enhanced yeah. their engine so that they could have uh, bigger maps and bigger PvE stuff. So what's Overwatch 2? It's like a PvE game where you can experience part of the actual story of 
Overwatch. All right. Yep. Is that it? That's it. We're gonna, we're gonna move on. <laughs> okay. Goodbye. I mean that that's basically it. That's basically, just... it. <laughs> that's basically yeah, it. I mean, there. I have a theory. All right. Go ahead. Yes. I, and and what I'm gonna say is just straight up speculation of the inner works of of the development team. Yes. So they do know that the community wants a PvE experience. Yes. And. But they they still acknowledge that the game is a PvP game mainly. Yes. So it's not. Yes. So what they're doing is they're taking the engine, they're probably updating it and adding it a lot of stuff that will allow the support for PvE missions and PvE story and whatever they want to do, which is probably something that the current engine does not support, and that it like they have to find workarounds in the current engine to the events that they do. Yes. So they're probably just adding all the stuff that they need. And they're going to build, like, on top of that, a PvE experience at that engine under the hood is going to bring some of the, some visual upgrades to to a PvP side of the game. So it's like, in my mind, it's like one biggest engine underground that supports kind of two games at the same time. There are not really two games. They're just one game. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because they, they two say parts that, of the same game. Yeah, but it's just the same game because they say that yeah. whatever new heroes and new maps are going to be released for Overwatch 2 are also going to be released for Overwatch. And like we're talking about this when they say that. And it's like they want to develop for two different engines. They want to develop two different games at the same time because that doesn't make sense. Yeah, true. So it's probably just one development cycle. And they're just gonna give all the things that they do for PvE. They're also good for the pe- for the people to play in on the classic PvP maps and modes and stuff like that. All that you they, say they're just so adding it's fact. Yeah, but it's like they never mention it like straight. They never said anything about the engine or what are they doing exactly. Yeah, yeah or they of the, or they have like different development teams and stuff like that. Okay, that part of details if the or on the teams, I don't know. They didn't say we watch every uh, single panel. <laughs> but but <laughs> they didn't mention anything. <laughs> but what I saw is the following. Um at first Jeff two years ago said, Okay, we can't do a lot of stuff that you want um for the PvE. Then, uh, when they released this, they said, okay, this engine is not a new engine. This, this is a better version of the engine that we have, like a second version, a 2.0 engine, that it's capable of lots of stuff. And yes, both games will run on the same engine. Both games will launch with the same launcher. Uh, so if you don't wa- want to buy Overwatch 2, uh, you will have the same launcher, just that you will have some parts of the game blocked, the PvE parts and all the stuff that will come with it will be blocked, but you will be playing on the same engine. The UI, the UI will change for you on Overwatch 1 because Jeff thought that if they see... The, they see that something looks like an advantage on the PvP uh, that would that should be on even grounds. So the new UI will be for everyone. Probably the textures, no. You can choose whether you want to have the new textures or the old ones. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't think that other textures would be possible. Yep. They, they, they said it. When? Uh, <laughs> in some panel? I don't remember that. I don't remember. We watched all the panels. They didn't, see, they didn't give any, like... The, like in they, the panel, they didn't give any technical information. Yeah, nothing, nothing. They were talking about like 
design upgrades. They want to talk about like new uh, features of the engine, but they never say that you can choose or not. Yeah, right? not that I remember in any yeah. of the panels. Yeah, they they, they mostly maybe talk... they said it, but I'm not aware right now. Yeah, they, mo okay. they mostly they mostly talk about like uh, you, we're gonna have like dynamic weather, which the engine didn't support. We're gonna have like yes. better expanded text texture and mapping and like better uh, abilities for the engine to give you a mission like PV experience, which the old engine didn't support. Right? That was the there was the amount of information that they gave us about that, and that all the new UI uh, changes and all that is gonna be for everything, right? Yeah. I'm I'm just yeah. saying out the textures because it's probably just out of just out of the technical side of the thing, it would it wouldn't be smart for them to keep two different sets of textures for the same models. So what they're probably gonna allow you is to downgrade the textures so that it runs at insane FPS when you're playing competitive yeah, or something possible. like that. Yeah, that is possible. But yeah. I don't think they'll have like two, two, two maintain sets. like two yeah. different sets of, of texture for every hero on top of that. Yeah. So, so I'd think... assume that is, they're just migrate to a new ones and they will give downgrade options for you rig to run at 120 FPS, whatever thing, thing you want to run into your PvP. Yeah, yeah the, probably. The weird thing about this, this announcement is like, is if you think about it, it's truly an expansion, but they don't want to call it an expansion. <laughs> yeah, of and we were, talking about, yeah. <laughs> we were talking about this yesterday. It's, yeah. Like, my opinion is they're calling it too. It's just a marketing tool because basically what they're selling in the expansion is just PvE content. Yeah, basically. So it in, looks in a, weird a, to call it ex Yeah. Yeah, and in the in the in the engine upgrade and the hot new systems and the maps, they're still being like free for the Overwatch normal people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all that so, is gonna be integrated. But, yeah, but it'll be weird to call it like Overwatch expansion. Yeah, Overwatch but it the has PvE anything expansion. to do with the PvP experience. Yeah, because we all know Overwatch is a PvP game. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah, that's so that's... calling it an expansion will expect expansions on the PvP side of the game. Yeah. But it's not that. Yes. <laughs> They're only selling you like PvE, like a PvE experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's so like... in that sense, makes more sense to call it two or watch two. Yeah. And that way, they probably even like from people who maybe played or watch one for a year or so, and they walk away from the game for whatever reason. Now they see, oh, there is a new game, so maybe I can come back. Air quotes. Air quotes. <laughs> It's a new game, air quotes, air quotes. <laughs> but it's the, the, the PV it is, it's a new game. Because yeah, but it will deliver a story. Yes, sure. Yes, yes. That that's one of the big facts that it's a new way of delivering lore to you. Yes, yeah, yeah. But but the it's previous also game didn't have. Them. Yeah, definitely. But 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 it's also probably a marketing tool to say like ah, true. to bring people who walk away from the game. Saying, oh, don't worry about Overwatch. No, no, no. This is Overwatch 2. Yes. This is all new. <laughs> new and improved. <laughs> new and improved. Same, but different. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's truly really like, it's truly really an expansion. So for the people at home that has Overwatch 1, and you don't care about the PV, PV side like me, because you play a lot of PV games, don't worry. You don't have to necessarily buy Overwatch 2 if you're not interested. You will get the new engine upgrade, you still get new maps. You still get the new hard upgrade with your Overwatch purchase that you have from forever and ever. Don't worry, you will get new engine, new features, and all that sort of stuff when it comes. Like, I don't know how it's going to work in terms of the launcher, if, if it just Overwatch is going to become Overwatch 2. Yep. Right? I would assume we'll have only so. one launcher. Right. I assume that Overwatch... It's gonna become just Overwatch 2 and you launch Overwatch 2 even if you don't own it, which is like the worst thing ever. <laughs> it's not that weird. It's just that you just put it two at the end, it's the same game. You yes, already it's have the same the game. Basically. That's it. Exactly. And you're gonna have don't worry about it, you're gonna have all, all the all the features, new shiny stuff, new models, uh they show it in the in the gameplay trailers and all this sort of stuff. 
for some reason now May is a main cast feature in the Overwatch thing, which is very interesting. She was yeah, like I think heavily it's probably featured. because people. It, it's probably because the May cinematic trailer yes. had really good reception. That's that's true. Still May May is still the devil, but yeah, yeah no, it's now. awful to play yeah. against, but. <laughs> But the, her cinematic trailer was really was cool. very really good, yeah. really good. And as usual, the the high quality of the cinematic in, in the launch, it was like fantastic for for the announcement of the expansion. And I think I'm gonna keep calling it expansion so people don't get like confused. <laughs> the uh, PvE it's a new, expansion. It's Overwatch too. It's yeah, a new Overwatch game. Two is the the PvE expansion. So, uh, in the more forthcoming things to come to the Overwatch players right now. We're going to have just one hero till Overwatch 2. Yeah. One extra and hero released till Overwatch 2. Limited when, but where did he say that? You should be careful. He said in uh, in one of the next panel of what's next. Did he, man that, that, did he explicitly say that there See, was going to yeah, be in the panel? They, okay. they, they, they were going to have one more hero launched till then. Still Overwatch yeah. But, but okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. They mentioned it there. And they, they're gonna go dark for a while till the release yeah. of this game because Overwatch 2, we're gonna I think this one is more like a year and a half close to to, to be released. Maybe it for some reason feels farther away from me because I didn't talk about any technical stuff. Yes. And like l let me put it this way. The week announcement for this BlizzCon was Diablo 4. Yes. And the next one was uh, Overwatch 2. Yes. So it will be weird to release the game in like a year. So but what I'm saying is that probably next BlizzCon will have a bigger... Showing like, Overwatch we'll have 2? more information about Overwatch 2. Yeah. And then... I don't know. It just... For what they show, it just feels like they have less than that. But maybe they just don't want to talk about it. Yeah, that's probably. I true, think yeah. uh, the, w the the game will be released earlier, probably before uh, next Overwatch League season, because they're rebranding all their Overwatch League themes to Overwatch Two. For example, if you see San Francisco Shock logo, uh, it's now SF Two. So they will probably will have it ready for next Overwatch League season. Mm. And but if you say that, that means that they're gonna release it next year. Yeah, next year probably March, February. I don't. They, they no, will I don't announce so. a date. If that yeah. was the case, they probably say uh, tell us a release date, like yeah. it's release gone. They're, they're well, playing. It is already November, so. Yeah, yeah. but they'll bring. They, they play very safe with release dates. They play ultra safe with that. But I think, for example, uh, yeah, the, the last year when they were doing all this social stuff like uh, the LFG and the and that stuff, they didn't want to say dates. They said um, we'll probably have it like I don't know, maybe about summer. I don't know. Uh, but I won't say anything else, they said. And they released it about summer. So I think that probably at the end of first quarter of the next year, they will have it. I really don't think so. Yeah, we were speculating about it. They're going to have like one more Overwatch season without it, creating hype for it. And then the next, and then the next, the next before the next Overwatch season, after the one that is coming next year, they will release it. That will be my window. Okay, it's a very long window. Yes, I don't know. Yes, and they said they say that oh, you're gonna you're gonna have one extra hero till Overwatch two, then we're gonna go dark for a while, and then we're gonna have like three heroes with the with the Overwatch two expansion. In the new maps, in the new yeah. game, in the new game mode, and I think that that new game mode will be must be ready for Overwatch League season two, season three. Sorry. Season three, yeah. I don't think so. I think I think it's gonna be like a more 
Fr from a business standpoint, they must do that. Because they're migrating all their ads and all their stuff to that, to Overwatch 2. But that's that that could be just because yeah. they just announced the game. So. Yeah, they wanna they wanna build brand. They wanna build a hype before releasing, right? They, they're not in a rush to like actually put it on. So they're basically what's gonna happen to is like have all these Overwatch leak yeah. at the same quote unquote patch that the live servers. So the one that the what people watching on Twitch or ESPN or whatever media they say they, they see Overwatch League, yeah. it's the same as they of what they are playing. So I think that they released earlier. Probably they will release next hero sooner than expected, probably on December. So next then, month, I don't see that coming. I don't see any. No, I don't see any, even close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not even close to it. Yeah, because I they didn't that... like they 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 didn't even talk about like details, techni nothing. Like there was nothing like nope. of, of details or anything. Like they revealed yeah, more about is... Diablo Four <laughs> in all the panels. <laughs> which is True. which? That's the point. That's the thing that it's really weird for them to release a game without talking all the technical stuff. Yeah. Because they don't usually do that. Yeah, they they didn't have any like no one technical panel on the on the entire BlizzCon. They talk about the art. They talk about the voices. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> that was it. But what what to talk about? What technical details are to talk about? Like how they're gonna migrate the engine? What features are gonna come with the with the engine? Like a better feature about the HUD. Like technical stuff like that, like they complete like trees and how they're gonna manage the, the proper trees of of the PVE side. How is gonna like the AI is gonna be programmed? And they talk about this like in all the like Diablo Four panels, and Diablo Four is yeah like way harder than this. <laughs> and they actually were very technical about Diablo Four. Like oh yeah, we're doing this with the lightning. How this is how we bake it. Uh, we're gonna do they this. They talk about the, the systems yeah. that they are aiming for. Yeah, this is the this is the the combat systems that are gonna work like. Did you have interruptions in animations? How are you gonna turn? Like they went very technical in Diablo Four. In Overwatch Two, was like nothing. It was like yeah, you're gonna have an upgrade of the engine. Congratulations and PvP and a new map. <laughs> I don't know, they, they, these people work in strange ways. I, I think that if I were on the board of Blizzard Activision, yeah. I would probably say that, okay, you must do this before Overwatch League Season 3, because money. I don't think so. I think they're going to I, I think they're gonna use Overwatch Season 3 as a big advertising for this. Uh, that sounds likely to me, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. So they're not gonna release next season. Next season they're gonna use it as a big advertising. As a big, they're gonna reveal small things about the next game throughout the season, so people keep watching the actual competitive Overwatch, right? They're gonna say yeah. like, "Oh, we're gonna have this at the end of this cycle, at the end of this uh, group stage. We're gonna have a big reveal of who is the next hero that's gonna come into Overwatch two, and sort that sort of stuff." Like, and they're gonna do that all throughout the year so they can have audience which is interesting in the PvP in the PvE side of Overwatch to come into the into the PvP uh, cycle and that's how they're gonna use it. That's their that's the marketing tool. I, I really feel like if they were gonna release the game in the next six months, they would have an they would have announced a date. Yeah for sure. Because six months is kind of the window time to to hype announce it. dates. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm um, I mean I'll I'll be really happy if they do release it sooner than what I think. Yes. I just I'm really cautious with that. Yeah. It's Blizzard, they don't They don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> okay, yes, they don't rush things. Yeah, they don't have That's any true. record of doing that anywhere. <laughs> not, not they don't rush. They never deliver like before time. Like yes. you know. <laughs> You know, like it's pushback. So. Yeah, like it, 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 there is a bunch of examples. Diablo three, like it took them like a year and a half more than they will yeah. initially release. Or Watch two, they took it a year extra of the original release uh, announcement. Overwatch. Yeah, or Watch for Watch, it took like a year extra, something like that. Uh, yeah. So the record shows <laughs> that it's not going to be in six months. 
Not even like close. Okay. Yeah. So what we have in this expansion in the terms of the PvP, in the terms of the PvP side, we're gonna have three more, four more maps, which is gonna be Gothenburg, Toronto, Rio, and Monte Carlo. Yeah. Yeah. Which are they gonna come into the system with this? We're gonna have three more heroes, which are not revealed. One one of them, I guess, is gonna be Echo. Or maybe Echo is the is the hero that they're gonna release before. No, but, so but they, they show this. So you're woman with the official... white hair, white afro. So you're so you're the Galerian. Yeah. Yeah, Isn't yeah, she yeah. gonna be one of the new heroes? Yeah. Yes. She's officially a, an Overwatch 2 new hero. Yes. Okay. She won't be the next hero. Yeah, she won't be the next hero. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but she's one of the new ones. Yeah, she's yeah. one of the that okay. comes into the expansion. And Got it. Yeah. So we're gonna have some hero from here to there. And on top of that, we're going to ha have selection of missions all around the world, like using the map, the expanded maps of Overwatch 1. We're going to have random objectives in the story with, with, uh, with items that you can pick up at the beginning of the missions to modify it. We're going to have talents and heroes selection, like a, a very uh, amplified side of that. Talent modifiers as items. And we're going to have din dynamic environments on all that and big expansion. So... That's what's gonna come with the other side for, for, for the side of PvE. I, I I have a question for you yeah. guys. Uh, they mentioned that they will have these hero missions that would have a lot of replayability. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do you think the replayability will come from? Because I don't see it right now. They mentioned they mentioned that it's gonna be one from the hero that you select because apparently the first time that you go into a story mission. Uh, but no, no, no. I'm not talking about story missions. They have. I mentioned two different types of things: story missions and hero missions. Uh, yeah, in the yeah, story yeah, missions, right. you have a selected selection, a, yeah, a yeah. limited selection of heroes to yeah, play yeah. the mission, the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you have these yeah. hero missions that they didn't mention that much about, but that apparently those are the ones who are going to be like replay. They, they say that they're going to change the objective of the mission. Okay. Randomly. That's 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 what they mentioned about that. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess the same map, but you you have to rescue or you have to do different things when you go into the into the actual mission. That's that that would be my theory. What do you think, Nick? I don't know. Really, too early to guess. Um, but what I know is that what they want to do is do highly replayable games because. What they said two years ago is that uh, we're very afraid of doing this PvE stuff because we know that what we're doing right now is not very replayable and we want you to go and play and play and play and play that game. Um, so I don't know what they're... what, what they are replayable standard is because they haven't done anything previously like that. I think they're gonna do it in a in a good way like b besides random mission maybe like different types of enemies in different locations so you have to think about your approach. Like think yeah. about that that Blizzard has like a lot of experience in doing this sort of like trip Super replayable games. So I think that that'll be my approach. Like if they're gonna put random objectives in each mission at the beginning, then they're gonna have random enemies on that too, right? And that's the way they're yeah. gonna change the approach to the thing. And and that that comes with the expansion of the maps and the dynamic way. So maybe one of the modifiers could be like, oh now it's raining. So you have like limited vision of what you're trying you're fighting, right? Or they're super foggy, right? That sort of stuff. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. I, I was just wondering. Yeah, I think that's the way that, that that's the way that makes more sense to do it inside it, and that's that's Overwatch two for for you guys. Uh, are you excited for it, for the new changes in the HUD and the PVE missions and all this sort of stuff? I I am more than excited. I'm really curious about how is it gonna look. You know. <laughs> yeah, how is it gonna take it? <laughs> I have. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, maybe I like imagination, but for me, Overwatch, it's 
it's a game out going from point A to point B. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how can I expand. Like, just right now, I cannot imagine how to expand that into a full, rich PvE experience. Fair enough. What do you think, Nick? But that's maybe just me lacking the imagination to it. Yeah. So I'm just curious. I'm just I just want to see it to see how see they what gonna happen. Do, what it's are they gonna, gonna implode. Do. <laughs> what do you think? Not Nick? that, but like if you think about like PvE shooters. Yeah. Like you think of the stories in I don't know, Call of Duty or any of these games. Yeah. Like they're kind of not that replayable. Like <laughs> Do you think they're going to do a Destiny like? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm That's what I'm wondering. What do they yeah. mean by replayability? What where is it going to come How from they because they that, don't yeah. have drops. So Yeah, yeah. What do I get from replaying these missions all the time? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. That's those are my questions and maybe I'm too close-minded to imagine it from the current game. Yeah. I just don't know. I I, I but I don't know. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm just waiting to be surprised with whatever they have to deliver. Yeah, true. Because with what we have currently in game, yeah, it's not replayable. We should wait and see uh, what's in store for us. Uh, I really like what, what I really like of, of these ideas that they are finally delivering on the story. Because yeah. the lore wise, this world is fantastic. And I have really liked the cinematics, comics, uh, short stories. They're very, very nice. But yeah. we don't have a unstable way of getting new lore of the game. So I think that. This is healthy for for the game, for yeah. getting more lore. Maybe it's not a PvE for everyone. We'll have to wait and see. There we go. That's that's the thing. I think I, I find it like nice to to attack that side of the community, which want more lore because the game has a very interesting lore. But on that note... No, I disagree. The, the game has really nice hints about an interesting lore that is somewhere that we haven't seen. Uh, okay. <laughs> True. True. Fair enough, yes. Yes. <laughs> nice hints about the nice... Yes. Uh, probably nice lore. Yeah. yeah. So let's see how they realize it. <laughs> yeah. Which like, is going like, to be we, the interesting we, part. We have picked that... Just little pieces of the lore that look like really nice and interesting. Yeah. But it's yeah. just that. It's yeah. We don't have the lore. So not in the comics, not in the cinematics, not yeah. in the hero trailer stuff. So hopefully they realize it look good enough and we will be happy on that note. Yep. And so for our last part of the day, we have World of Warcraft Shadowlands. So I have two things to say about this expansion of World of Warcraft for 15 years of World of Warcraft. Oh my god. We're going to go uh, to the afterlife and it's going to be cool. And then I yeah. defer to Lucho, which is the expert of World of Warcraft. <laughs> I, I, I am no expert by any means. I don't play <laughs> much, but it's out of us. I'm probably one who has played the most. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to visit the Shadowlands, which are the afterlife, apparently. And there are like four factions of afterlife. Entities that they call covenants. Yeah, covenants. Yeah, covenants. Uh, and I don't know. One thing that I found interesting in, is that we're probably gonna. I don't know if revisit, but it would be really cool if we get to see some of the old uh, Warcraft heroes that yeah. we really love, like Uther. Oh, I yeah, I, I really like Uther. He, he was amazing in Warcraft Three and. And scenarios at Kel and Keltas, oh, all those guys. Yes. All the OG guys. They're so, yeah. super, super nice. So this so is be pretty cool. Sorry. This is the this is the Shadow Keep take 
on World of Warcraft. Oh, that was the sensation that I got. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is sadly, yeah. <laughs> it was like bringing it's back all... similar? Oh, it was bringing back all dead people back and exploring like like the death side of the world. So kind of like like funnily similar. And, he, and he, all, all this is orchestrated by Sylvanas, which is the crazy lady, which has been like doing struggles in the last expansion. <laughs> and she just for, like, yeah. For more than that, like, yeah. At the end of Legion. Yeah. She burned the tree of life. Yes. On the elf, on the elf kingdom thingy. Yeah. And that basically was a betrayal of the, of the alliance in quotation marks that the Horde and the Lions made to defeat Legion. Yeah. And basically that's the thing that jump started the whole uh, Battle for Azeroth kind of thing. It just, she burned the tree and basically Alliance said, oh no, we cannot allow we this. Cannot per- allow We're going to kill uh, the, or the, the uh, Horde again and everything's terrible. But this time yeah. she, she goes and but, like... But not, only th- but not only that, like the, the problem is that I mean, Sylvanas is the was the solely leader of the horde. Yeah. But with all these things, a lot of the other factions, like a lot of the other leaders in the in the horde, were not happy with her decisions. Yes. Like Sarfan, which is the orc, the orc leader. Yeah. Like he seemed like that was not um, a honor decision. Like it was not based on honor. So he was yeah. super salty about that and. And the trolls also had problems with that. It was so basically it was Sylvanas pissing on everyone, even yes. their own horde. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it, even amongst players, it was super dividing. Like there were some people who said, yeah, I'll follow Sylvanas everywhere. And they were all saying like, no, F Sylvanas because <laughs> yeah. not my horde. Hashtag. Not my horde. <laughs> Hashtag not my horde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh wow! Hashtag no man in my heart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in so, this, like, she kicks this expansion by going and kick the ass of the Lich King and breaking breaking his crown, and like yeah. it, it all hell broke loose because she is like the warden between the sh- the Shadowlands now, the afterlife, and the war, the normal world of Azeroth. It was like super dramatic. And yeah, then, the, the Lich King is a warden basically who keeps. Every, that in check, basically. Yeah. And she apparently is working for somebody inside the Shadowlands, which was like yeah. a, a reveal of like a dude in chains into the into the thing. Very dramatic, very interesting. Yeah. 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 That's that's on the lower side. It just yeah. everyone is is looking forward to what's gonna happen with Sylvanas. What what is she doing? She's yeah. been crazy for the last couple of years now. Yeah, literally, literally crazy, crazy cuckoo bananas. <laughs> yeah, and, and super powerful for some reason, right? She's been kicking ass. At Apparently, everybody. she's been, or some people speculate that she's been like getting more power from the Shadowlands. Yeah, because she was not this that powerful. powerful. Yeah, she was not that OP. So yeah. That's the thing. We're gonna change. Uh... They're gonna have, in the terms of the systems, they're gonna have uh, the Covenant system, which is gonna be a new program system. Yeah, it seems to be like a mix between uh, the garrisons in Warlords, Warlords of Draenor. Yeah, which was a really. I don't know if you guys know this, but. That Draenor, Worlds of Draenor was one of the least well-received expansions in WoW history. Wow. Like, okay. no one liked that expansion. It was super funny because the tra- like it came out of Miss of Pandaria. And, and, it, uh, yeah. and yeah. Miss of Pandaria was kind of a mixed feeling about, about the game because yeah. it just didn't feel like WoW. It just felt too cartoonish. But that yeah. was only a trailer because the story behind it was super deep and interesting. It had to do something with the corruption. It was it had to do with something with the corruption of the horde and stuff like that. Yep. So Lord was interesting, but the package of the pandas was kind of weird for WoW. It just didn't feel like WoW. And then after that, they kind of tried to or correct with uh, Warlords of Draenor, which was again like this super greedy 
time travel parallel universe. Yeah, I saw that. That was story, that which is crazy, <laughs> insane bananas. <laughs> but the story is again interesting. It's just that the end game system was this garrison thing. It was basically each player would have their own town that yep. you could upgrade, and you could farm things for the town. And the town was like the, the garrison, which which is what it was called, was the main progression avenue for the game for the end game. Yep. But that meant that a lot let that sometimes the most efficient thing was not for you to go out and farm stuff, but to you just micromanage your garrison. Oof. So it was not that fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. So in terms of like end game engaging and activities and that kind of stuff, it was really poorly received and with a good reason. Like it is an interesting idea to have this play your own town. Yeah. Because that always sounds cool. Like you can upgrade it and you can get to make it your own and it sounds super cool. And it is cool. Like once you go to a garrison and do it, it's super cool. But the fact that all the grinding falls into just micromanaging the garrison was super boring. So what the Conan seems is to be like taking some of the good things of that and mixing it with the with the um, with the newer system that is based on uh, so Legion had like the end pro- end game progression system was a weapon artifact. Yep. That you will get to upgrade and so they will get, like you will do at the beginning of the expansion a quest, and at the end of that quest they will give you a weapon artifact. Yep. And you will start upgrading that artifact with essence or I forgot the name of the MacGuffin thing that you used to upgrade the weapon. Yeah, the uh, Afrid, 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 something, something. Ah, sorry, I think it was the name or something like that. (laughs) But but, yeah, basically you have like this magical weapon that you will keep just putting resources into. And that was really nice because you will have this persistent thing that you could keep upgrading forever, basically. (laughs) Basically. Yeah, and then what they tried to do in Battle of Azeroth was instead of giving you a weapon... They will give you an artifact that you could keep upgrading forever. And when you get the artifact, you will keep, you will start getting something that is called Azeroth Armor, which yep. is like a, like a simple, like a simplified version of the, of the weapon artifact. It's just like artifact armor that has like little ways to upgrade. Yeah. The problem with the system is that the upgrade options that you really like are really few. And it's super grindy to get new armor. It's super slow to build the power up. So fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People didn't like it. So and what from from what they mentioned, the Conan system, which is gonna be a new end game progression system. It seems to be a mix between this artifact and this garrison thing. So you're gonna play allegiance to one of the Covenants. Covenants, yeah. And it, this is going to give you, like, uh, passive bonuses and stuff like that. And you get to upgrade your... I, I feel like you're, you will get to upgrade your alliance with the Covenant. Probably. Yeah, probably is the thing, right? Get a stronger uh, bonuses and stuff like that. But they also mentioned that you're going to still have, like, some of these... Uh, Quote-unquote personalized armor kind of thing that you can upgrade and stuff. Yeah. It was kind of vague what they say, but we'll see how how the Conan system is gonna work. Yeah, it looks interesting for me. For me, I think I think it was very very interesting that they talk about like that evolution of the system that they, they learn about the other expansions. Uh, and, they, they've been they've been trying things and learning from the which is past good. fifteen for years. Like, yeah. like <laughs> I actually like I actually appreciate that a fifteen year old game still try like weird and new stuff, right? Yeah, Even and they, they fail. Around. Like they fail. Like. Yeah, even if they get it wrong, like it's important for them to try new stuff and like iterate about that the new stuff to, to make the, the the game feel more fresh. And they talk about that, like about like the progress of leveling alt is going to be easier for the veteran players. Yeah, because talk- right now you have to basically fly through the whole thing. Yeah, and now they're gonna offer you a is that once you play. The initial campaign of the expansion for your alt character, you'll get to pick a covenant from the beginning. Yes. And while you're learning up, you'll still be progressing through a covenant. So yeah. 
That's really nice. Yeah. That's, that's they also really mentioned, cool. yeah, they also mentioned that they're going to change the learning, like the learning from one to max level. Because how it works right now is that you have basically all the expansions open to you. Yeah. And you get to, not all of them, but not really, like you can open all of them. Yes. And you can do whatever you want, but they're going to change it right now. So you pick one expansion and you level up through that expansion, through the content sure. of that expansion. Yeah, 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 yeah. And only that. And then that seems to be a good change because then with the new character, you get to pick and choose how the do content you want to do an experience. Yeah, that's, that's so, so cool. And then the new trend of the, <clears throat> of the, of the industry shows here, which is targeted end game loot. Which everybody's yeah, so, into. <laughs> yeah, so how it works right now is that you have basically once you reach endgame, you have a plethora of like endgame activities that will give you rewards on a weekly basis. Yep. So you can do raids once a week, you can do dungeons once a week, or yep. on a certain difficulty once a week. And you can do battlefronts and these sort of things in island invasions. And all of these activities, like you complete certain amount of them per week and you get a chest at the end of the week and you there get your loot. Yeah. The problem is that there is no way of targeting that and you start like it, it has a similar problem as I guess that's in that if you are at the end spectrum of the of the power level. Yeah. Which in what is called item level. Like if you're at the end spectrum of the item level, yeah. You could get just all Chess pieces all the time. Wow. Yeah. Not really getting upgrades. <laughs> yeah, which is the, it's, and that's and those activities are activities are the only way to to get that to get upgrades yeah, at yeah. some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't expect you to grind mobs anymore. Like you should just be doing dungeons and, yeah. and raids. Which is great. It's good. It's yeah. good that they actually target that. Feel more rewarding for you to do all the all the stuff. And to finish that, we have more customization for the races announced, which is fantastic. Yeah, that's... We always want more customization to things. We always want uh, more fashion frame everywhere. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's an interesting move yeah. for them, actually, because WoW already has a good set Sorry. of customization. Yeah. But they're, they're expanding it. That's always good. I'm, I'm always good, yeah. All in favor of that. So with all this, Nick, will you will you try the new Shadowlands expansion in yeah, a, in a world where you have the time? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> probably, right? I, it looks, I would, it looks very I would try it. Yeah, I it looks, it. It looks I very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I say this to Lucho like, oh, this looks very interesting and I would probably like to try World of Warcraft again after like 10 years the last time that I played. <laughs> Something like that, 12 years. <laughs> probably more. more. Yeah, probably more. <laughs> Last time that we played, it was like the Burning Crusade, I think, <laughs> which was I, the first expansion. I, yeah, right? I don't remember. You don't remember? It was like the elf thingies, the Burning Crusade. It wasn't the Burning Crusade. It was the when when the Blood Elves ca came out. Yeah, Burning Crusade. Burning yeah, Crusade. Probably yeah. so the first expansion. Yeah, but with this and and the fact that they're streamlining more systems, like it makes it makes the game definitely more approachable. And with that, yeah, we finish. It... Oh, you have something else to add, Lucho? Uh, yeah, no, that, ah, the, 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 the last thing that I was going to mention yeah. is that a lot of people give a lot of crap to Barrel for Azeroth, but it had something that I thought was super cool. And is yes. that usually they release a raid that continues the story of the, of the expansion. Yeah. yeah. And this time they have, since it's Barrel for Azeroth. Yeah. One of the raids had two different raids option for the different factions. So there was basically one raid for the Horde and one raid for the Alliance. Oh, interesting. And the, and you will get, Different basically things. you will need to have one character in what in each faction to experience both sides of the story. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was super experience. cool. That yeah. sounds really good. <laughs> so we'll probably, we'll probably try World of Warcraft Shadowlands when it comes out. It sounds interesting, but with that, we finish our deep dive. That was a lot of news to cover. <laughs> yeah. A lot of things. To cover, thank, thank you guys. And we move to the audience questions and feedback of this week. We have a couple of questions about uh, last 
last uh, podcast about uh, the borderlands and how we will improve it. So we have why do you guys think the uh, what do you guys think about the announcement of that Eva will be the protagonist of future DLCs in, Bo in Borderlands 3? Ah, uh, uh, I know, right? It's just, <laughs> just a little brat that I don't like. Nobody's happy about it. <laughs> what do you yeah. think about Nick? I think you're in this point of this. Yeah, you, you know Ava. Ava is this the, little kid that's yeah, the teenage ultra nine. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was everybody's reaction. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's not a nice character. Nah, she, she's a little brat, so... Yeah. If, if she gets to mature a little bit and, very, and be more... It's annoying. She's annoying right now. Yeah. <laughs> she's, definitely, she's definitely not nice. And, and we, we share the, the sentiment with all the Borderlands community with a big... Community, yeah. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> no please, what? no. Yeah, well, would you do this? <laughs> Why? <laughs> exactly. Why? Well, let's see what happened. More content is always good, but... Oh, okay. And for a second question is, which character is your favorite Your favorite in the entire franchise Borderlands? Hmm. For me, it's probably easy to answer. All right. Tell us about it, Nick. Tina. Tiny Tina? Or oh, big Tina? Insane Tina now? <laughs> I don't know. Tina. Either tiny or big. Probably. Yeah. She, she's probably... One of my favorite characters of of the entire saga. Cool. Mm. Super endearing, yeah. Lucho? I, I really like Tyron de Leon. You really like Tyron de Leon? He's an yep. amazing character, I agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> he's he is a, a fantastic character. And I and, and I would agree with Lucho. I think I think at this point my favorite character is, is too Tyrant Dillion. He breaks all the stereotypes. He's yeah. super charismatic, <laughs> and he he plays like a very central part in the entire story of, of Borderlands Three, like by the side, right? But he is yeah. like a fantastic character in construction, in development. When even if like even if you meet him for a little bit in the in the actual games, like he he gives he, he leaves you like a, a lasting impression. It does. Yeah, yeah. Even if he's such a small character, is like fantastic in what they do in the franchise with him in, in terms of realization of that. I agree. All right. And don't forget, if you want to give us more questions, that, do you have your burning feedback. questions and feedback? Don't forget to tweet us to all the Twitter's handle with hashtag the sweaty and the farmer. Or just tweet us directly. You can send a message to snail mail or to Gmails, whatever. You can pass by my stream and ask questions there. I will take it for the feedback and we will answer it here. Yeah. But I think that's it. That's all for this week's episode. Once again, thanks for turning in into a sweaty farmer and the game design. My name is Lucho and you can find me on Twitter at Luis G. Polanco. And I am the Learning Gamer. You can find me on Twitter at the Learning Gamer and on Twitch on twitch.tv slash Learning Gamer TV, where I stream Mondays to Fridays. And where they can find you, Nick? You can find me at NicolasSG9 on Twitter. All right. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and ring the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube because that the algorithm likes that. To the sweaty, the farming, and the game design. See you next time. Bye. 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 And did you know... Blackberries are very high in antioxidants, which are known to protect against inflammation, cancer, neurological diseases, and aging. Stop the presses, folks. We found the cure to everything! <laughs> <laughs> and in the United Kingdom, folklore stipulates that picking blackberries after October 11th should be avoided because the devil has made them rotten or poisonous by, by spitting or doing other damage to the berries. What? What? <laughs> What? I know. <laughs> and some traditions suggest that blackberries are representative of the blood of Christ. 
Some also believe that the crown of thorns that was placed on Christ's head of, for his crucifixion was made of blackberry plumbles. So this plant, this fruit apparently has like a bunch of biblical and terrible undertones and it cures That's... everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have everything in one fruit. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>